go have lunch. So this is the covenant epistemology part of this that has, for me, has augmented out of subsidiary focal integration. But if I start talking to you about love and we haven't torpedoed that daisy, love is out on a pedal, right? So uh, I, I feel like it's important for me to do with you the work of getting subsidiary focal integration because that dispels the daisy and you can see Mel riding a bike or you riding a bike that that's just a response to love. So then, then we're in a better place to talk about loving in order to know. So Mel has this vision <laughs> of Whatever it is he's doing in his performance of, of bike riding, something's drawing him, welcoming him. He's riding with exuberance out of a love, toward a love. It's a vista and it's full of possibilities. Heaven only knows where Mel is gonna go after this moment where he's running over the ducks. I, he has a whole day of adventures in Boston um, in front of him. So I would like to argue that we love in order to know. The goal of knowing is encounter, communion with the real, which is far more three-dimensional than information collection. And it catches you up in it, it enthralls you, <laughs> and, and so there's all this, it's because it can be just delight. And so I've moved on in my book, Loving to Know, to try to argue, make the case that the real is person-like. It's not hard if, for you, the real is God and God's stuff. Of course, if the real is person-like, it's, you know, God, the Trinity, and his knickknacks. You know, I think of us as the helium balloons <laughs> from the cosmic party of, of the Trinity. So, and I'm going to argue a little bit later today that, that uh, we... Uh, invite the real, but actually the real is inviting us first. So that's, that's the posture that uh, Mel is uh, living out on that bike. So the thesis of covenant epistemology is that the best paradigm of knowing, it's not information, but it's loving to know, it's the interpersonal, covenantally constituted relationship. And we'll be working that through in, in the next slides. But you can, I think you can start to imagine how it goes. And guess what? The redemptive encounter actually becomes the paradigm for knowing. Jesus walks into your life and takes over and you find yourself on your face with Thomas saying, my Lord and my God. And that's how you know you've made contact with reality. Jesus is the answer to our epistemology. And believing Jesus and communion with him, I'd like to argue, is actually going to make you better at your golf game, Tony. <laughs> we sometimes need to pull out the stopper that's stopping the ears of people with regard to getting the gospel, as Newbigin said, we have to do something in the form of pre-evangelism that might just involve epistemological therapy, but guess what? Chances are we need it ourselves first. So, this restores the gospel to its rightful place and transforms us, our spirituality, and our world. Um, but, you know, I, when I teach this to students who really love Jesus and are, are really uh, anxious to go spiritual on everything, I say, well, don't go, to, don't go spiritual too fast. You know, you want to think about bike riding. You've got to do an example. I make them do covenant epistemology projects. You've got to do a concrete example of knowing to see that this is ordinary knowing and then take it into your spirituality and find it healed. So the knowing venture, as I start to talk about it, um, is kind of like the Magi. So the Magi who are Arabian, uh, what were they, <laughs> sorcerers? I mean, we, har we hardly even know, but they get this idea that a certain star belongs to a certain king and they risk everything <laughs> to follow it. Now, if that isn't a moving toward the not yet known, I don't know what it is. 
And then when they, sh when they find Jesus, uh, it's a ba he's a baby, right, in his mother's arms. Well, something must have happened. The Lord must have, in grace, revealed himself to those wise men because we call it epiphany. And Jesus manifests himself to the Gentiles. Praise God. Again, how do we come to Christ? He has to manifest himself to, to us. And so we've got a coming to know adventure. I love to make words up, put them together. From pilgrimage to epiphany. And in my little old brain, those magi and the guys at Emmaus are kind of like the same guys. They're not really, but they could be. Because the magi have an eyes were open in the breaking of the bread moment, as we do when we come to the table. So that's, that's all biblical themes and all of that, but I'm just trying to make sense of how everybody knows this happens in ordinary, in ordinary knowing. And so then, I would argue that when you fix somebody's account of knowing and you see that knowing works this way, knowing actually becomes what Simone Weil calls a form of the implicit love of God. So there's something embedded in the, the act of knowing, the knowing venture, that invites the reality of God. There's this natural fit. So in the knower yet to be known relationship, we do not know in order to love, we love in order to know. That's a little bird called a cedar waxwing. His name is Bandit, I, in, I mean the one on my shoulder. Uh, I inherited him from a student and his, he could not fly. Uh, he had, uh, I eventually discerned, he had no feathers on one of his wings. And uh, so he took up with me, he spent the summer on my shoulder or a little stick, and I had to learn about cedar waxwings, and I hadn't known anything about birds, let alone a bird this close to me. Uh, this little guy would go to sleep with his bill on my cheek. Uh, cedar waxwings are group birds. They bathe together, they eat together, and here was Bandit, he had no group. I was his group. And this bird only settled down and became calm when he was looking at my face. Like, looking at my face. <laughs> he eventually healed and, and flew away out into the, the you know, great beyond. And I was both heartbroken and heartened at, at the beautiful healing that happened in this. But the point, and this is the story at the beginning of Loving to Know, is I had to learn to live life on the terms of a bird. You know, I had to learn 80% fruit, 20% insects. I ha every morning I made him this miniature fruit, cut up fruit, fruit cocktail. He was leaping up and down, waiting for me to do this miniature thing. I could waft him through the air on his stick and he would snap mosquitoes out of the air. It was lovely. So, I, in loving to know, I developed this idea, well, if, if reality is person-like, then the, be, the way, the best way to go about knowing is to invite the real. So, you want to treat it in a person-like way, which means with a sort of etiquette. I call it epistemological etiquette. And so you have to comport yourself so that reality then would graciously self-disclose to you, and that makes for great knowing. So uh, I've got this lovely catalog of, of inviting the real things that I'm gonna talk to you uh, in the next part. Um, I think I'm coming to an end here, though. I think that was just a, a heads up. Hear this, I love this. And by the way, I love this picture because that man obviously has arthritis like I do, and he's so happy playing in his garden, even though his body is killing him. So the goal of knowing, don't you love this, is not comprehensive information, but rather friendship with the real, communion with the real. And I would like to success, suggest this is what we were made for, and this is the good life. Here's the other Wendell Berry slide. So his boo words I gave you before, now here are his yay words. And this is what the Port William membership is all about, and in particular this book, Remembering. These words in the second column are words that dispel the daisy. 
They Dispel the Daisy. Great book. I cry every time I read through page 48. I can't get past it without crying, but I come, it's almost like the novel version of Covenant Epistemology as far as I'm concerned. So here's our uh, before lunch conversation, and then uh, <coughs> we'll be back together again after uh, lunch, and uh, Tony's gonna direct us about this. But see if in your uh, hospitality threesome, uh, you can say how your skill is an example of loving to know, and perhaps give other examples that have occurred to you of things that you love in order to know. And then you can reflect on how does loving to know restore meaning. So go, you have until 1227 and then uh, maybe I'll not get you to respond, I'll just get Tony to direct you with regard to lunch.